this is uh, certainly not deserved by me. There are many people in this room that really probably deserve this a lot more than I do, but I'll take it. <laughs> uh, and with great um, appreciation uh, for, for this, and I thank the MTA and uh, this evening and everyone that's here. Uh, this still is such a shock to me. Uh, I've just always wanted to be a trader in my life. And um, uh, uh, just a couple of things to comment on. I truly wish that my parents were here tonight, that they hadn't passed away. Not to see me get this. I wish everybody in America was here to see that we're not wolves on Wall Street, that we don't have forward expletives in every third thing that we say, that in fact we have a great passion for what we do, and that we're legitimate and we're honest in what we do, and I actually think that we have more desire to solve this grand puzzle of the market than we do to make money. The money follows if you're good at it, but the, the impression of what Wall Street is about and what we're about is totally different. I have to disagree a little bit with Bob Pisani on this thing about the market being rigged, because Bob, it is rigged. It's averaged 9.7% a year return, year after year after year. And unfortunately, people think the market is rigged as they see it, so they miss out on this tremendous wealth-breaking, wealth-making machine that's there for all of us. And um, if the market was rigged, why do all the massive funds with huge amounts of money still have down years? Clearly, the markets aren't rigged. It's, a, it's an, an, an event that we try to accomplish things at. And it has changed so much over the years. In 1963, I tried to open an account at a brokerage firm. They wouldn't take it because I was a chartist. And a chartist couldn't open a brokerage firm. The firm said, we don't, we don't want to open an account with someone who's a chartist. So it's changed that much to see where it is now. And there's somebody who I'd really like to acknowledge tonight. I'd like to thank Ralph very much, who I've learned everything from money management on. Uh, Ralph, you literally made a fortune for me. Uh, and for my people who have gone on to win these trading championships consistently year after year. And Tom, I've learned so much from you about the markets and about dealing with people. I've had the pleasure of watching Tom's children grow up. His children and my children have had the pleasure of watching Tom and I not grow up and still be pretty much kids. <laughs> Tom mentioned uh, the Gold of Exodus book, which the Castle Rocks Entertainment just licensed, uh, bought another option on the movie. And uh, it was an expedition we did in Saudi Arabia. And I'm really thrilled because I found out that the person who wants to play my role is Pee Wee Herman. I don't, <laughs> that was the most fitting character, apparently. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Bob Prechter. And I'd like to give a little history about this business that we're in. In uh, 1965, I think, the uh, Security Exchange Commission came walking into my office, which is in my house. We'd moved into literally that day and they demanded all my records. And I said, well, they're in a box over here, maybe over here, or they're over there, I don't know where they were. But they couldn't find them instantaneously, so that began my great battle with the bureaucracy, starting with the Security Exchange Commission. I have my degree in journalism. I believe in the First Amendment. I believe the First Amendment is, says there should be no law abridging the freedom of speech and press. The Security Exchange Commission didn't see it that way. So because of guys like Bob Prechter and myself, we put some money together. We got a case to go all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States of America called Lowe versus SEC. And the SEC lost. And that's why you people don't have to be registered with the SEC that are writing newsletters, having blogs, giving advice. That's an historic point for this industry. That was because of what Bob did and a few other people. We raised the money we got behind that cause. But when the United States Department of Agriculture shifted the responsibility for the futures market to the new CFTC, they apparently couldn't read the low decision, and they couldn't read the First Amendment, so we had the exact same battle with them. And who was there? Glenn King Parker, Bob Prechter, a little bit myself, raised the money. We took another case to the Supreme Court, Coucher versus CFTC, and that case was eventually decided in our favor that you don't have to be registered or licensed to publish a newsletter. I had the government come in and want all of the subscribers. They wanted to know who all of our subscribers were. I said, well, would you do that with the New York Times? How can you do this? 
So that battle has been won. But I would suggest that you have to be uh, awake and alert because it would not surprise me to see that happen again because if there are wolves on Wall Street and maybe there's wolves in the legal business and the real estate business, I think there's more wolves on Capitol Hill than there ever will be on Wall Street. So, so be diligent there. Be passionate in what you're doing about the markets. It's a grand experience. Uh, not only you make some money along the way, that's wonderful, but the friendships that you make along the way and the sense of accomplishment um, and to see what's happened. As um, Ralph and Tom mentioned, I grew up in Montana, so I have a deep appreciation. In Montana, we learn about music. There are two types of music, country and western in Montana. So I want to steal a line from uh, Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings, uh, a great line. I'm going to just twist it a little bit. I would give $100,000 if I could just know somehow what Edwards and McGee would think if they could see us now. So I'd like to thank the MTA very much, and really, if Edwards and McGee could see what's happened to this business of technical analysis from a guy who couldn't open up a brokerage account in 1963 because he was a chartist, to, it's now acceptable. Thank the people like Ralph Acampora and the MTA. We're a reality. And thank you very much for the reality that's been created. A, a phenomenal group. Thank everyone very, very much for an award that I won. I don't deserve, but I'm going to take it. Thank you very much.